as the world crumbles. Our divine power. Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up, I'm Mark Walker. Remember we give away a free Nintendo Switch game each and every month to the subscriber most active. Immortals Phoenix Rising has been on my radar since it was called Gods and Monsters. And Ubisoft have gained themselves a certain amount of critical attention for their departure, finally, from the Assassin's Creed franchise, but also bringing a game to the Nintendo Switch which looks like one of its own beloved children, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say it does enough to differentiate itself. Please do stick around until the performance section of this review, as I think it's very important for Switch owners. So does Phoenix Rising manage to fly close enough to the sun without getting burnt? Or will the Nintendo Switch prove to be its Achilles heel? Let's find out. As far as narrative and story goes, they have a rich wealth of Greek mythology to tap into, and they do exactly that. You begin as the unlikely human hero Phoenix, who is himself a storyteller, but the game plays out through narration taking place between Zeus and a slightly uncomfortable Prometheus. The dialogue between these two characters punctuates your whole experience, and the game would have fallen down straight away if it hadn't have been done so well. The most beautiful. Ah, but our hero knew the apple symbolized more to Aphrodite than a self-regard worthy of Narcissus. There are moments that had me laughing out loud and I wasn't expecting to learn as much as I did during my adventure. Essentially, the narrative is one giant wager between Zeus and Prometheus, with Prometheus putting his money on you to defeat the evil tyrant Typhon who is set on destroying Zeus. And through this, he shattered the essences of many well-known gods and it's up to you to travel to the different locales and try and help to restore those essences. In a parallel to Breath of the Wild, these take place in four different distinct areas of the map, with Typhon taking a very Ganon-like central location. There are a number of side missions and quests, and what the game does brilliantly is introducing Greek mythology in a natural way through those side missions. Many of these are entirely optional, but all are voice acted, narrated, and usually accompanied by cutscenes to make them much more interesting and enjoyable. I wasn't entirely sure how the whole Greek mythology thing was going to work, whether it would just be a loose framework to rely on, but instead it's a core fundamental part of the experience, and the game is all the better for it. But you love all your children equally, of course. Ha <laughs> ha! Good one! In terms of gameplay and controls, well, the Nintendo Switch version has a few extra features. Thankfully, they've included gyroscopic aiming, which is entirely optional for the detractors, and they've also gone for a pretty slick implementation of HD rumble. You'll notice this when climbing up surfaces or when using the Overwatch ability to scan and highlight new treasure. You can create your character from scratch and choose from a number of difficulty levels, although I found that the default was just about perfect. It's been interesting playing Phoenix Rising alongside Assassin's Creed Valhalla on other platforms. As it's clear there are many aspects which cross over. The combat is a good example. You'll have your light and heavy attacks which are separated into two different weapons, your sword and axe. You can parry moves as long as the character isn't shown in red. These are unparryable and you'll have to dodge out of the way. Of course, there's a lock-on mechanic, and using your heavy axe attacks will build up their stun meter. If you can fill this bar, it will cause them to stagger and fall for a few moments, allowing you to wail on them, and with the perfectly timed dodge, allowing you a similar window of opportunity. You can quick switch characters and who you're attacking with the right stick, and those basic attacks are chained together using the trigger buttons. While certain aspects of this combat system clearly take inspiration from other titles, it feels like the refinement that's been earned through the Assassin's Creed games. You'll not find any broken weapons here, and there's a fluidity and challenge to it that makes every single fight feel fun. There is a stealth aspect if you'd rather go that route, allowing you to crouch and creep up on enemies, backstabbing them to cause massive damage. And yes, there's a bow, which can be gyro-aimed, but has a very nifty secondary fire mode, allowing you to steer the arrow. The world itself is split into several large sections, and as you'd expect, Ubisoft couldn't create a title without having you climb up 
very large objects and then scout the area. Thankfully, this is much more infrequent so as to bolster and heighten the experience rather than cause irritation when you're forced to do it over and over again. It simply serves to unlock the four main areas where you'll be then given the chance to scout and tag items which will show up on your main map. The world is pretty huge, but the level design itself is excellent. There are a number of intricate pathways, hidden routes, and unlike Breath of the Wild, you can't go more than five minutes without finding something genuinely quite interesting to look at or do. Don't get me wrong, that game did its thing perfectly, and it is abundantly clear from the world design, Icarus's wings and how they work, even down to small things like shooting fruit from trees or pushing large objects through puzzles that they took inspiration from that game. And certainly there are a few eyebrow raising moments where they do veer a little on the imitation side, but everything's done so well. In Phoenix Rising, you don't have shrines, you have Forts of Tartus, which are filled with challenging puzzles that use all the different skills you've got available to you and were surprisingly challenging. The same goes for the game in general. It's got a really good level of challenge and despite appearances, it's certainly made for adults as much as it is for kids. As you progress throughout your adventure, there will be a number of different weapons and items that you can find through hidden locations or which are made available to your character through the main story missions. You'll be finding and collecting lots of different items throughout the world which you can then use to upgrade your skills. These come in the form of godly abilities and it's from an early central location you'll be able to do this as well as change your character's appearance, upgrade the different potions you've got and it's here in the Hall of the Gods where as you restore them they'll eventually all gather. To aid in your traversal of the pretty massive world there are a number of mounts that you can find. Once Tamed, these are added and you can choose which one you want and you're good to go. The stamina system is stripped straight from Breath of the Wild and it's through the aforementioned Vault Challenges that you'll gain the Zeus's Lightning you'll need to upgrade your stamina. There are a number of massive boss fights but also less massive ones like a dangerous chicken I thought and each of them will be tied to their own story. There's one area of Immortals Phoenix Rising I'm not entirely convinced about and that's the implementation of a shop. Yep, shop. This allows you to buy visual customizations for all of your gear, essentially skins, which I have no problem with in essence as long as it's not pay to win. And while you can find a number of these in game, the cynic in me feels like these systems essentially strip content from a game and then sell it back to the player who's already paid for the game. Let me know if I'm just out of touch, but yeah. Never a big fan of them. In addition to this, there is a number of post-launch DLCs coming that will add new quests and challenges, and this is already lined up. But thankfully, Ubisoft have also included a number of free content DLC packs. I've really enjoyed my time. I think it's a brilliant game and much better than I thought it was going to be. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20. It's a very refined and enjoyable experience, particularly in handheld. And the controls are very good. The gyro is a touch hindered by performance. Control score 17 out of 20. This section of the review has completely changed. Now originally the game was running at a very low frame rate in docked mode and I'd recorded all the audio, made the review, basically saying that as it stood it was quite unplayable. And don't you just know it, as I'm going to put the review up, I see the game updating in the background, boot it up and in docked mode it's completely different. Now previously it wasn't running at 30 FPS and it seems they've managed to bring it up almost in line with the handheld performance. There are a few cutbacks, things like the draw distance, but it still looks very good and it's running much, much better than it was for the vast majority of my review period. This was my major gripe with the game, as well as a number of crashes. Now, I can't attest to whether they, this patch has fixed those crashes, but it's certainly done a serious amount of improvement on that performance and frame rate. You'll find God Rays, a day-night cycle, a large, completely explorable open world, and every area feels like it was handcrafted. You won't find large, empty spaces, and the character designs as well are excellent. The same applies to the audio. The narration is top quality. Poor Helen. Once Eros struck her with his arrow, she was powerless to do anything but leave her husband, Menelaos of Sparta, for Paris. with a number of well-known voice actors and has that kind of writing where you can watch it with your kids but there are a ton of adult jokes thrown in that they'll never understand and you'll be sniggering away to yourself and the soundtrack is brilliant 
My previous score that I gave this section was 5 for visuals and performance, whereas after the patch, now that it's running okay and there are some beautiful areas, despite a touch of low draw distance, it's still a very pretty looking game. There's still a little bit of work to be done with frame rates just to bring it up to that solid 30, but it's so much better than it was. Visuals and performance score 15 out of 20. It's a really tricky situation as regards to the crashes though, as in the two hours since the patch has launched, I haven't been able to crash it again, but that doesn't mean they aren't still there. There, so please again do keep an eye out on that top comment and what I'm going to do for the rest of the day essentially is try and crash the game if that still persists I'll make sure to put it up there the audio and sound are fantastic and they score an expected 18 out of 20 Immortals Phoenix Rising is a full AAA price, £49.99, or your regional equivalent, and certainly in terms of the amount of content, the gameplay, and the overall experience, is worth that. And as long as they have genuinely fixed those performance issues and there aren't any more crashes, it now is essentially a very good purchase. There's a massive amount of content here, and what's more, it's really enjoyable. I don't think I've scratched the surface in terms of finding all of the secrets, and I've plumbed in about 25 hours. You can rush through the main storyline but it's one of those games where you're going to want to take your time and really find and do all of the different challenges that are on offer. I give value 16 out of 20. What a frustrating review to make. You spend hours playing a game, only to then essentially have to disregard most of what you've said, apply a patch and play a different game. Ay caramba. Still, after the patch, it's gone from scoring a switch up score of 74% to scoring a switch up score of 84%, which is a much better reflection of the amount that I've enjoyed this game. There is another patch coming as well next week to bring further improvements, and once again do check that top comment, I'm going to try and crash this thing because I got so many crashes during my review period, I cannot believe they've managed to fix all of them. Apologies if I sound a little bit stressed out, but these things take a lot of time, and to have to suddenly change huge chunks of a review because of a patch that drops an hour before, my goodness, I need to go and have myself a cheeky beverage. Thanks for watching, let me know down in the comments what you think of this one, and as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya! Phoenix Rising, available December 3rd.